let's start uh, by uh, by the beginning. First, uh, probably there was an idea, and who who got this idea, and how how did this idea uh, got you know how did it turn turn into a, a script, uh, uh, the script for a publisher of Berish? So I I wrote the screenplay, and I am also a professor. Uh, and so I have uh, gone through the process of getting tenure. I'm not sure what the tenure process is in the in Morocco, but in, in the United States, if you don't get tenure, you lose your job. Uh, and so while I was going through tenure, I had the idea, you know, under the stress that I was going through is like, what would happen if I accidentally, you know, killed a, a student? What would I do? And so I just played out that scenario in my mind and you know uh that was the the beginning of the screenplay yeah so the way you say that the way you say that just makes me laugh because <laughs> it's just you know it okay. sounds like what what would happen if i forgot to do the laundry this week you know, it's like <laughs> what would happen if i accidentally killed a student you know and then we yeah, go oops. from there yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is true that uh, i i said it in states a long time ago and uh, and i and, and this uh, tenure is uh, is something very special because uh, uh, it's very risky i mean if you if you uh, don't make it then uh, yeah you lose uh, your job and uh, difficult maybe afterward to explain in in other colleges or universities why uh, you couldn't make it uh, there but mm. also it's heaven before heaven i mean once you once you get there, then uh, you know uh, nobody questions you anymore. And it, so, so I guess all professors, uh, you know, uh, dream of it. I suppose <laughs> it's a good thing. They they still question you, but once you get tenure, you you don't care what they think anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do anything about it. I mean, even, that's right. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> so, so it's so it's really the the best setting to. To, to to use for a, for a character and you choose uh, this uh, this uh, nice looking character always uh, you know uh, very polite very uh, very well behaved very uh, but uh, you know between uh, uh, between what you got a rock and, uh, and uh, how do you say it in English with a hard place a rock hard place. in English in French uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. So so uh, so so you wrote the script and then uh, and then uh, you it's an independent uh, funded movie I suppose uh, so you 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 found a, a small studio to uh, or company production company to 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 fund it I suppose so uh, I um, was pitching it to a bunch of different places you know and then I met uh, my producing partner Jonathan Miller uh, and he uh, it's his first feature film that he has worked on and he was very excited about the screenplay and about you know you know start getting like he's had a very um, he himself has a successful business so he was very connected with other private investors so he was able to get other investors on board so um, you know it was a very uh, fortuitous lucky uh break for us to get you know that partnership going because because those partners were not uh from the cinema world no just... no it's completely independent and all the people that the investors and the producers uh, aside from me uh really never worked in hollywood or worked in the industry at all so it is a truly independent film yeah okay so but they believe in the idea and the, the power of the idea to to uh, yeah make people laugh yeah, yeah that's uh, that's yes. very that's uh, that's a very uh, very nice to hear uh, such a story you know it's, a, <laughs> a it's a, i feel like it's a lightning strike you know the the odds of that happening were really are very unusual in the united yeah. anywhere really to get yeah, back anywhere to, but uh, yeah. also maybe in the united states it's a it's a business where uh, you know it's very difficult to 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 see miracles happen, you know, <laughs> it's uh... yes. <laughs> but but I had, made, I had made a feature film before that with uh, also Tim and I worked on that one together, uh, and because that one I did, you know, very low budget, um, where very few people got paid, and it was 
you know, a lot of the money I, I financed it out of my own professor's salary and, uh, and we shot it over four years and then it got distributed. And because I made that movie is very helped me get this next movie funded because I, I proved that I can deliver a movie and, you know, get it out in the world. Yeah. Well, my question is, uh, at, uh, uh, how did you, uh, uh, when did you get involved with, with the film? Was it before you, you even, uh, uh, took the, on you to to play the leading role. Were you already uh, in in the project and and contributing to to it? And uh, yeah, so that we. Yeah, so I you know I felt so fortunate. Um, as David said, I had a chance to work with him on a previous uh, feature film that David made. So we uh, both uh, knew each other well from that experience. And uh, and shortly after David wrote. Um, a draft of this film, he shared it with me. Um, and uh, I uh, read it and and just was incredibly uh, impressed by a first draft of it and and very interested it, in it out of the gate. Um, and David, uh, you know, I think uh, had me in mind somewhat for the the lead role, you know, at that point already. And so we uh, started, uh, kind of connecting with that in mind that I was going to uh, be playing Jim Bowden uh, and and moving forward with, um, you know, ideas about the script. Uh, you know, another thing I felt so fortunate about is David was uh, willing to hear me out in terms of, you know, things I was getting from this great uh, story that he had cultivated and uh, to give some, some uh, minor uh, thoughts and feedback on the, on the script overall. Um, but I, you know, I felt really actively engaged with David in terms of our objective of trying to get this film done. And uh, so uh, until Jonathan uh, came into the picture, we were working very closely together uh, to try to uh, start the journey of uh, fundraising, um, figuring out a way that we could um, find a budget to uh, shoot this film that um, we both have been incredibly passionate about. Uh, and then Jonathan popped in and that just kind of changed the, the scope and opportunity of it, uh, which was, as David said, in incredibly fortunate. Um, and we are able to move forward pretty quickly uh, from there to go into pre-production and, and starting to get ready to make the film. So, oh, sure. but we had rehearsals, you know, we, I would go to David's office and we would, we would look at the script. We'd talk through it sometimes page by page. We'd talk through beats and moments in it. Uh, and, and that for me, having a chance to really dig into text and, and script is is something I love to do. So it was it was a great opportunity. Yeah. Well, uh, just uh, so that uh, I, I understand better, uh, uh, David, uh, you said you you are a teacher. You know, you're a full time teacher, and you're doing and doing uh, filmmaking as a as a as a second career or as a hobby or as a. Well, I'm a I'm a tenure I'm a ten I'm a professor, and my area is film production. And oh, so, okay. so so one of my so as as a professor you have to not only teach classes you have to do whatever your 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 research is and yeah. instead of research I have creative activity so it's the expectation of my job is to make or write or do and uh so I'm you know it was an opportunity but because this was such a huge project I took a leave of absence in order to make the movie because there was no way I could keep doing my job and okay. still a feature film I really had to put 100% of my my efforts in there and even when I went back to teaching and we were in the post-production process uh, I mean I was still like you know working on the movie I still kind of feel like I'm working on the movie even though I'm not really but I'm still talking about distribution and you know marketing and we're still trying to you know manage yeah. all that yeah. and and Tim you are you are a professional uh, uh, actor or uh... yeah so I've been I've been an actor uh, I went to, to school for, for acting, both undergraduate and, and graduate uh, work. Um, I lived in New York for 16 years, uh, where I worked there predominantly uh, as an actor, um, doing theater and uh, 
some film, uh, some television uh, commercials. Um, and then, you know, I moved to Denver on a one year trial with my wife and son about 13 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's just a tremendous place to raise uh, kiddos. And I was fortunate to find a, a really strong theater community uh, and continued doing that uh, as an actor. And then I also uh, became a, a, a teacher. I'm, I'm, I'm the head of acting for an adult acting program oh, uh, okay. that's affiliated with a, a theater company here in Denver. Um, but I would say, you know, and, and probably I don't want to speak for David, but, you know, my heart lies in the work. I, I love teaching, but my heart is uh, is still firmly embedded in in being an actor. And so yeah. Uh, yeah. having the opportunity, I've, I've had a chance to do four films since I moved to Denver uh, and being a union member, I feel fortunate uh, that I've had, you know, the opportunity to do that many Mm -hmm. um just because uh, union work in this region of the united states is not as plentiful uh the job opportunities aren't as as strong so you have to kind of be on the coasts more so uh uh to you know be able to audition and have mm -hmm. that opportunity but i will say one other thing is that the the pandemic and the lockdown really changed that uh, as well, potentially, because there are so many auditions and opportunities that are coming virtually now. Yeah. Um, so you don't necessarily have to be in one of the, the major uh, cities, which which I would say includes Atlanta now as well for for film and television. Um, so so you would ha you would have a, a, an audition uh, with Zoom uh, and they. And they would ask you to play a role or something, and uh, and just uh, watch you perform it. And uh, oh, that's interesting. That's nice. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's it's. I feel like it's never the same as being in the room, uh, yeah. but to have those additional opportunities um, is it's it's a wonderful thing, you know, to to be able to audition for something that's happening in another part of the country. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because they're allowing virtual auditions to happen, so that's that's very cool. All right. Well, let's uh, let's uh, um, since you've talked about uh, uh, sharing already this experience uh, from uh, even before uh, getting it to the point where you you, you were thinking about production, uh, but once you got into the production, obviously, David, you were uh, playing your uh, role as a uh, a director and uh, Tim as uh, the protagonist and uh, what what was the the relationship what was the dynamic of the directing uh, in a comedy well in this uh, this genre of comedy which is uh, you know it's uh, it's it's not uh, your uh, your it's dark comedy yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's a, it's a specific comedy it's not it's not your the comedy we would have seen many times. Uh, it's uh, really specific to the word of uh, academics, which is, uh, you know, interesting to uh, to the, the last comedy I saw in the, in this world was uh, was uh, if I remember well, uh, back to school. You know, in the in the eighties. You know, Ronnie. Uh, yeah. the film. Uh, <laughs> if you remember, it was in a, on a campus, and they were, you know, having all these. Well, the movie that we looked at a lot when we were making, when I was writing it, there's a movie called Wonder Boys uh, with Wonder Michael Boys. I didn't Douglas. See it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a, it's also a dark comedy, uh, but it's you know dramatic in nature, and I would say that's and no one dies. Close, yeah, I'd say that's probably the closest in tone to it. You know, he, you know, nobody. Yeah, that's right. Nobody dies. A dog dies in it, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but uh, in in your case, I mean, you you had to. I mean, it's. Uh, tell me about the, your process. Tell me about uh, how each one of you figured well, out. I would say that. Yeah, I mean, the process when we were making the movie was very collaborative, uh, and um, I would say what Tim and I did is uh, looks like Tim's frozen there for a minute so maybe he fell offline yeah. so i'll keep talking yeah. uh, 
But I feel like, uh, so what we did is, you know, every day we approached the film in a very naturalistic way, meaning like, uh, even though it was a comedy, the reason that Jim's char Tim's character of Jim was constantly doing what he did, it wasn't to be funny, like in his mind, he had a, he was doing it because he needed to do it. So like, I knew it was gonna be read as funny, but the but in in the character's world, it wasn't funny. It was just what he needed to do to support his career, to support his family. So he had a reason for doing what he did. And so when Tim and I would discuss, you know, why is this character doing that? It's like, well, he's doing it because he believes in his heart that if he doesn't do this, it's going to damage his family. It's going to damage his career. It's going to, and, and it's going to, you know, shatter his goals that he's had for years and years and years. Yeah. And so we never, we never approached it from a comedy angle, even though we knew it was funny, we really approached it from a realistic point of view, like a grounded uh, viewpoint. Uh, exactly. And this is what we, we, we perceive. I mean, I mean, we, we, when we kind of, uh, kind of uh, not laugh but we smile and then we feel that uh, it's because we feel this pressure that he has on him uh, you know trying to trying uh, to achieve his objective uh, of uh, you know uh, uh, just uh, getting his tenure and uh, not wanting anything else and and having done any everything that needs to be done to get to that point and then and then and then uh, realizing that the world is crumbling down because of uh, situations that uh, are totally out of his uh, control. And, uh, and that, uh, you know, it's- uh, It's out it's, of his control, but he makes some really bad decisions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, yeah, uh, exactly. The pressure puts him into this, uh, this situation where he starts making these, uh, these bad decisions, but uh, Still with good intentions, being a good father, a good husband, uh, uh, he had everything going for him uh, to, in fact, to succeed. And then he he gets, uh, he, you know, he gets clogged. Yeah, yeah, but as far as the process is concerned, I would, you know, just to go back to your question. Yeah. I mean, uh, you you popped offline, Tim, and I was just talking about uh, your reasons, the character's reasons for doing things. But you know, do you want to talk a little bit about our day to day process? went on the set yeah and i also i just want to echo you know that notion that the word that both of you used which was uh objective you know because i think that's what really drove the the humor uh frankly for me was you, you know as i think we all know you you can't play for the laugh uh or think about something oh this is funny um, you have to uh, be connected with the, the circumstances of, of the moment and and have an, a want, an objective that you're playing, you know. And I think that's what really sourced the humor in some ways was the fact that uh, Jim, my character, had this uh, undying uh, drive to attain this thing, you know, that he wanted so badly, Uh and was able to still go home and have dinner with his family, you know, uh, in the middle of it. And uh, so I, I just really appreciate that uh, observation. Uh, and, 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 and But I would also say that what was really, what I really loved about the process also was because when Tim was inhabiting this character, he was very, you know, in the moment, like he was not finding this funny because in in the in the protagonist world it wasn't funny right but you know i would sit next to my cinematographer and i would hear it like he, we have to be quiet during the set during the takes and i'd hear him snicker you know like he'd be like laughing and i was like okay we got it you know <laughs> and then uh you know so i like i i you know because i wrote the script and i worked with tim and i knew it inside and out while you're making it you kind of forget what is funny about it you know in those moments because we're really shooting it moment to moment to moment. And then we do it over and over and over until we get what we felt was the right, you know, the right performance. Uh, and uh, and then even in the editing room, once we got to the editing room and Tim wasn't there for most of that, uh, but my me and my editor, we'd sit there and like, you know, just laugh on things that when I show it to an audience is they don't, 
they enjoy it, but they don't always laugh. And watching, like, for example, there's a scene where, you know, Tim has gotten punched in the face and he's got a black guy and he's talking to his family and like the doorbell rings and the cop shows up and even his whole body, like as he gets up, like you could just see him like, oh gosh, now what? You know, like, like that's not a laugh out loud moment, but it was a laugh out loud moment for me because everything just keeps dragging on for this poor guy, you know, and that, that to me is where the humor is, you know? <laughs> but, you, but you did, uh, did uh, choose uh, uh, a set of characters that uh, for totally different reasons are against him or are against his, uh, are blocking his way to the, to the you know, uh, the, the a lot of obstacles that 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 that, that uh, character also very very funny the the the, the junkyard the you know the junkyard oh. uh, RJ. Guy, uh yeah. who's there uh, you know <laughs> wouldn't talk wouldn't uh, <laughs> anything, <laughs> you know? he's uh, one of my, my favorite side characters i really enjoy his performance a lot yeah, yeah. and uh and uh also kind of giving him a hard time by, by his attitude and, uh, you know, <laughs> not very cooperative. And uh, so, so it's, uh, in fact, you, you set your, your, your character, Jim, in, in this, uh, in this trap uh, he could have never thought of. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about that even with our cinematographer, like everything is an obstacle, like everything, like in, for his character, even when he goes into the, into the hardware store, he like runs through a puddle, you know, and like, you know, like there's always like a thing that's causing an obstacle to, you know, his, everything was a problem. And that was one of those things that was, you know, we were very conscious of. Yeah. And and speaking of that, I, I love the, the puddle reference. Cause I, you know, I think that those were things that we are able to find uh, while we were shooting uh, scene, scene by scene, you know, is uh, because I feel like, uh, David and and um, Trevor and Chris and I were were really dialed into that notion of obstacle, what's getting in the way, and and uh, and so we would find these additional things as yeah. we were uh, starting to to realize uh, that scene when we were shooting it, and uh, oh, you mean you know, you so be like during the during the shooting, you you decided smaller ah, is uh, smaller yeah. things, yeah, you know, just. Uh, Smaller things like uh, which freaking shovel do I choose? Uh, the, the puddle that David mentioned, you know, you're running into the store and of course you step into a freaking puddle, you know. Uh, uh, you you punch a wall. You forgot that that's brick and it's going to actually break your your knuckles, you know. <laughs> it's like then and then you have to deal with how am I going to operate with this hand for the next, uh, you know, week or, you yeah. know, it's all these things that. Uh, continue to add as obstacles uh, and and some of those like the the punch of course that was in the script all the major things were were right uh, yeah. already yeah. written and thought of but the little things were were the fun things you know on the day-to-day yeah. -day that we would also find because yeah. we were I felt like we were really embedded in what was going on for Jim you know uh, through the through the story so yeah yeah well uh as a matter of fact, the shovel, the shovel episode was very interesting, you know, because he, 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 he still kept his senses and said, "Okay, I want a refund. I want," <laughs> and, uh, and that's uh, maybe the professor, uh, you know, talking, yeah. you know, very, very uh, rational what? in his uh, in his mind, you know. Yeah, yeah why, like, why, you know, you know, why not go back to the same hardware store <laughs> and try and get a refund yeah, instead of going to another one? You know, exactly. I mean, it's just, it's so logical. It makes it, exactly. and, but, uh, and that was all in the script, character. of course. It's funny, it's manner to, he, he's a very perseverant uh, person. I mean, uh, I mean, one thing he showed in this, in, in this, uh, in this story is that his uh, capacity to resist. I mean, he's, he's been uh, like a punch uh, from all over, yet he's resisting. He, is not falling apart. Uh, I mean, uh, and and uh, and that's probably what makes uh, people like him, you know, because mm. uh, because it, you know they see, oh, okay, look at how this guy is capable of fighting. Uh, you know, he's murdered. I don't know how many people. And then well, you also you also see him, 
you know, struggle with the act, like he he regrets the da- the the yeah. people that he's he's harmed, right? Yeah. So you see him feeling bad about this, right? So you understand him, and also you see him loving his daughter and loving his yeah. wife. So you know him as a nice man, and so the the so when you see him do these horrible things, you understand where he's coming from. And you know, I have a boy who's thirteen years old, and uh, and when he watched the movie. Uh, he, he asked the question, which I thought was a very interesting question of how come we like the guy who's killing people, but we don't like the Dean who's actually not, he's just a jerk, but he didn't do anything wrong, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, and cause that's how we set him up and that's how we write him off is like, just, he's a jerk, you yeah. know? Yeah. But yeah. the truth is that he's not really a bad guy. He's just made, you know, he's just not a nice man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. Even like the girl that dies, she like she's a very un, she's beautiful, but she's unpleasant, uh, and but she doesn't deserve to die, you know. Like she just, <laughs> you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, so so you you the the film was uh, was shot in how many uh, how many weeks? We shot the film in uh, about four weeks. <laughs> uh, we had. Uh, a 22 day shooting of primary photography. Uh, And we had two days prior to principal photography where we had some special effects things like the scene of him walking down the hallway that happened before principal photography. And then also uh, the student film, we shot that way before so that we would have it on set, you know, when he was actually looking at the computer. So we would have that there uh, for him to react on. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's all, all together was 24 days of shooting. Oh, and that's not bad. I mean, for, uh, the, I mean, however, it was, it's not bad, but it was wildly stressful because uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we were shooting in the wintertime and, and in Colorado, that it gets dark around 4 30. And so we um, had very short days. Uh, so so we were rushing are... quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, yeah, I can understand that uh, that, that is a problem because you need yes. to. You need to work very fast and uh, maybe yes. not do as many uh, as many repeats as you wish. Uh, you could well, do. I mean, we we managed to get what we wanted to, but what would happen was, you know, it would be like after one o'clock, and my DP, my, the DP would say, "David, we only have like three hours left, and we have to get all these different shots." And we kind of go into high gear, you know, and like just go, 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 you know. And so we got everything we needed, and because we were in a situation where. If we didn't get what we needed on that day, we were done. We didn't get the locate. We'd lose the location. Yeah. So we really had to finish it. And so we like we all like just went into over. You know, like we start out slow, and by the end of the day, we're going really fast. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So you're really working location by location. You basically shot uh, the film. Uh, you know, uh, location by location. I mean, you would not leave the location and return a few days later no okay no, like, yeah, so uh, like out of this... out of sequence out of sequence okay yeah okay. yeah it's, it's a little bit more difficult to for 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 uh for the actors to 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 work on uh out of sequence but uh but mm. then with the uh, with a good direction uh <laughs> well that's why we you know that's why i wanted to work with tim because he's trained and he's a professional and so all the people on set you know, our actors were all like versus they were they were comfortable, like going from moment to moment and just kind of like they would they, I would listen to them talk to each other about, OK, where was I before this scene started? And that's really Tim's world. So you could talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I yeah, just I, I agree that. And that's, I think, one of the things I really enjoy about uh, the challenge of, of making a film, because I think most often it is shot out of sequence. And so, you know the whole ask of having, you know, you're through of the story in your mind and kind of uh, set in, in the sense of what is the arc or the journey of this character, you know, it's, it's so interesting in the process because you, you really have to have that loaded and ready uh, before you start shooting. Cause you could, you could day one of shooting could be the, you know, the penultimate scene of a film, you know, so you, you, you don't have the luxury of that shoot schedule to get there. You know, you have to be able to be there uh, 
uh, from from the get, and um, and and that is very collaborative uh, yeah. because you're doing all that work on your own in preparation. But then there's uh, you know conversations that we had to make quick work of the conversations because of time, as David mentioned. But we're talking together. We're like, okay, what just happened? Where 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 am I at right now? Uh, and then, you know, asking the questions after each take, do, do we feel like we got it, not only in terms of the authenticity of, of playing the scene, but did it, did we get it in the sense of where Jim should be at that point in the journey of the, the film? And, exactly. you know, that's, that's not unique, uh, but it, 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 um, it's uh, so enjoyable in a film where, there's a character that really has a through from beginning to end. I mean, you're really with this character from yeah. moment one to, to moment end. And so th there's even more of a mindfulness about that because of that progression. That was so much fun to, uh, to try and figure out, you know. So you, I mean, you, you know, think about this movie. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I just meant to maybe clarify this. Uh, first of all, you, 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 before even starting to shoot, you knew exactly uh, how uh, Jim would be emotionally at every step of the of the movie. You know, because because you know the the emotional journey uh, it was clear in your in your head, and also how you would uh, because we were shooting small pieces. Uh, you you would know also how to break down that uh, emotional journey into into just small pieces to know in each scene or uh, or part of the scene uh, how he's going to be uh, developing his uh, his emotions. Uh, all that needs to be already in your head before uh, uh, starting to shoot. Otherwise, you you'd be a little bit uh, lost. I'd say yes and yes and to that. It's like, you know, I feel like it's more of a, a complete awareness of the the circumstances and the, and the journey. Uh, and so understanding very specifically what's going on for Jim, what's happening, and then there's potentially room for how it manifests, you know. So, so you know, I, we're not saying necessarily – you know, this moment, there has to be outrage. I, and I know that before we start shooting the film, this moment, I have to cry, or this moment, I have utter joy. I, I'm more of like, I know this journey so specifically when we're starting. So I know what's going on in this moment. And then take by take, we might say, okay, great. Let's now let's, because we know that so well, we know the circumstances so well, then we have the room to go, okay, well, what if uh, my response or reaction to this is completely internalized? So it's still, you know, maybe I'm full of rage, but it's all manifesting internally because I don't want to show it to whomever I'm, you know, facing the detective, right? And then we do another take where it's like, okay, now let's have it completely externally manifest so that I don't have control. I've lost control of containing my emotions or whatever right so there's a number of different how in which it manifests that we can explore take by take mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and i think and that and i think that's evident in your performance tim like if you look at the scenes when you're by yourself you behave one way and when you're in front of other people and you're reacting other people like you it's the facade that we put on when we go to work is there you know and mm. so like like mm. when you're burying the bodies and you're like by yourself, you're like, ah, you know, and, or even when you're like talking on the phone to the Dean, like you can kind of see that you're in a different place and you've been turned like, so you let yourself go. And so that's mm. just Tim's, that's an example of like what Tim is saying is, you know, cause this movie really, you know, Tim's character is in 95%, like he's, he's in almost every scene. And so like mm -hmm. we're following his journey. And so like how he reacts to other people is why it's funny. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and also how pe people react to him, react to him is, uh, is uh, very interesting also and make it, uh, <laughs> yes. uh, make it funny. Uh, how, as, as a director, you, you also had the clear idea, I, I suppose, or vision of 
of this journey, this uh, emotional journey for this character. Uh, uh, and uh, how do you go about uh, collaborating or explaining or, or maybe adjusting or, or just- Well, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, I think I, think I know where you're going. I think um, it's, a, it's a magical thing to be working with someone like Tim or a, a professional actor. Why? Because I, I know the plot and I know where it's going and I know how it ends and I, I've written the dialogue and I hear it a certain way in my head. But when, you know, Tim comes to set or when we rehearse this, he brings this whole different, you know, the reality comes, you know, now I'm actually seeing it. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even see it like that. That is amazing. Like, this is so much better than I imagined it to be. So it is a collaborative process where you know like it really comes to life and that's that is the most exciting part of it is like what you see in your head rarely ends up on the page but it's um often better than what i thought was going to be like i think the moments that i've written were funny to me but i didn't really know what it looked or felt like until i saw saw the actors do it yeah yeah so the so and i i would say on the flip side so sorry i didn't mean to interrupt uh I, just on the flip side, I would say, you know, I think the room for that humor and the room for the layers of this story were there. Uh oh, one thing I'll let you know, I have two very large dogs who are very interested <laughs> in something in the backyard right now. So, <laughs> But I was going to say, you know, on the on the flip side of what David offered is because the script was so uh, good and specific and realized uh it it provided the opportunity to to uh step into that with such facility and then start thinking about ways once again in which it might manifest but that's really the source of it was david's idea and the and the script that he wrote so uh, you know that that kind of collaborative uh component was was something that was uh just a, a pleasure to to be a part of yeah, well, uh, well, everything f fits in. I mean, uh, uh, the script is there to give room for everyone to to bring the best and the most creative aspects, uh, and and then the and then it enriches uh, the the projects. But yeah, it's it's very interesting that how this process worked very well for you, and uh, and the result is there is that we have a, a black comedy with uh, with very strong. Uh, comedy uh, uh, component uh, that is totally credible and, and, and totally believable and uh, and then we will we, we'll, uh, not only do we follow him but we you know we 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 want him to succeed I mean uh, this guy everybody is uh, you know we wish he could uh, you know the the nightmare could end for him and maybe <laughs> maybe for us too because we uh, uh, we have empathy for him we have a lot of empathy mm -hmm. And uh, and it's and it's you know it's it's the way we 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 learn to, to uh, we observe him and we learn to to know him and uh, so he's a, he's a thick uh, character the way I think uh, it was written and uh, and then played and directed and uh, <laughs> that's nice why where where are you uh, taking the film now from from now uh, is it uh, uh, in the uh, in the circuit the festival circuit or, or are you planning to uh, to uh, have it uh, have a theatrical uh, release or uh, what, so what we have it? a di so we have a distribution deal in the United States with a company called Buffalo Eight, uh, and we have a release date to some with several streaming services uh, on August eighteenth. It's going to be on Amazon and Vudu and Comcast and a bunch of other uh, uh, outlets. We currently don't have theatrical distribution. Uh, it's in the United States, the people don't really go to the movies as much as we, you know, so it's not, we're, we're hoping to get theatrical because honestly, I think it does better in a theater than it does on TV. Uh, but you know, we're, we hope that it will happen. We're still talking about, excuse me, international distribution. We're looking for, you know, uh, ways to get it out to other countries as well. I, we screened it at about 12 festivals so far. Uh, we've won a bunch of awards at those, and uh, you know we're going to be in London again at the end of this month uh, at a at a film festival. So it's doing really well, and you know also in London and in in Britain, 
they're uh, they really like this type of humor as well. So it's very successful yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the academic world uh, is also uh, it's also a place where uh, humor is uh, present and uh, we don't see that much so so when we see a movie like this that goes into that world it's always uh, very very interesting to uh, yeah to watch so you're uh, you're you're planning to uh, uh, as you said earlier uh, work with the distribution uh, possibilities and the uh, and uh, or are you already working on a new project or uh, what what are so i've written another screenplay and um i have some interest from some people to help it get made you know it's still in a development phase because uh, we don't have uh, a but we have our expected budget but we don't have any money yet but we have some places that we are starting to to uh, pursue uh i mean I, it's another dark comedy uh so we'll see you know yeah you know, but we haven't, you know, we haven't made any deals yet, but we have somebody has optioned the script. So we're, it looks like it, it may go forward. Yeah. Okay. Well, we would be still uh, directing it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, when you write, you write to be able to direct or, 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 or you write and then you say, okay, it's an option. No, I, I write to direct, you know, okay. I mean, if, if Wes Anderson wants to direct my screenplay, I'll let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise no <laughs> yeah but you know the, the interesting thing is like at one point when i was trying to get publisher parish made you know i was members you know i just wanted it to get made and i remember talking to a distributor uh, uh, a studio guy and i was saying you know i'm okay if somebody else directs it and then he stopped me and he goes why do independent filmmakers always say that because as the writer i know the story better than anyone else so if we get a new director they have to come on board and relearn the material and have their own interpretation of it. So since I wrote the thing, I'm I'm already, you know, embedded with with the idea. So there's one one phase that doesn't have to be reinvented. So yeah. you know, so when I wrote, you know, when I write it, I pretty much want to be the director. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, in Europe, it's very common. In France, and uh, you know, you uh, most of the directors are uh, you know write their own stuff, and uh, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's quite common even here in Morocco, uh, but uh, less common in the states normally. Well, big studio maybe films, uh, but uh, independent films maybe we you know one one would find that. Yeah, yeah independent filming is. You know, it's a tough world for it because it's very hard to make money in independent film without, you know, none of all of our actors are dynamic and terrific, but they don't are they're not household names. You know, they're not Tom Cruise, you know, and yeah. and so that just limits the, the amount of marketing abilities that we have. So we have to work at a lower budget in order to make back the money that we could possibly earn and. You know, and, and we don't know if we're ever even going to do that, but we're trying, you know, so. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it is a good strategy. Make it, make it uh, uh, yeah. less costly make it less to money. make yeah. money. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it's going to be difficult to make money with the, if the budget. Well, we have is... to make back the money in order to make more movies, right? That's the main exactly. thing because yeah. uh, people have to believe that you can do this and return the money to the investors, even if they don't make money on it they would like their money back, you know? Because exactly. so, yeah. <laughs> if, if they go out and say, he did not return my money, it's a bad publicity you don't want. Uh, well, they're so. not going to give us more, put it that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So, you're, so you're planning on maybe uh, finding the partners, right partners for this new... Uh, uh, new film, a new uh, dark comedy that you, uh, you have. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very, and and how about you, Tim? What what's the what's the next step? Now you, you to me you 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 became a very well established cinema actor with this with this film. <laughs> he will be. I think the movie's going to mm. hit. He's going to be. Yeah, famous. I think. I think. Yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> the, 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 the we're both going to quit our teaching comes jobs. Comes out when... as a as a really a heavy uh, heavy actor. You know, be, beside mm. the character. In what way, you know, so mm. hopefully this no. will work. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. I, I um, am hoping it uh, uh, begets more opportunity and work. Uh, that's always what we're we're looking for, you know. Um, 
so that's uh, that's for me in, in process right now is just uh, is landing the, the next job as an actor. Um, I'm directing a play uh, by Carol Churchill called Mad Forest, uh, which is about the Romanian Revolution um, starting oh. in a couple of weeks. So I'm I'm looking forward to to working on that project. Uh, so you you are in the th the world of uh, theater also very. Uh, what 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 is it called? I I look I look it up. Mad. Yeah, it's a Mad Forest by Forest. Carol Churchill. Yeah. Okay. And it uh, it's about the Romanian Revolution that happened in 1989. Yeah, yeah, I I remember those those images were very 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 strong. You know those images of uh, of the Romanian Revolution, especially when they took the couple uh, presidential couple to uh, <laughs> terminate yes. their lives. That wasn't very uh, fun. I but it's it it stays in the it's, head. <laughs> it's not a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think we can maybe uh, uh, stop here our, our uh, discussion. And uh, I wish you both uh, the best luck uh, first to the film in our festival, but also to uh, your careers, uh, which uh, are uh, headed uh, uh, to me. Uh, you, you've, I think you're, uh, you've made your, your proof. You're, uh, you can, it can go only uh, upward. So uh, yeah. we'll be we'll be in touch, and hopefully next time you have a, a, a comedy, please uh, think of us uh, and uh, let us uh, be part of uh, of your uh, journey also. And uh, thank you, thank you again, and uh, uh, I hope you you spend a nice uh, end of the of the day, which is a very sunny, nice uh, sunny day in in uh, in Denver, Colorado. Denver. So. <laughs> And hopefully well, you'll be able to come to Morocco at one point. Uh, I would love to. Festival is so would I. Yeah, well, we'd love, we'd love, we would have loved to bring you all guys over, but uh, we, we are the four edition is still uh, building up the reputation and uh, and means to to be able to afford uh, bringing uh, people from uh, all over the world. But uh, hopefully we will succeed in it in uh, in a few. Uh, I hope uh, in a few years. Uh, uh, work, working on this. Thank you again, and uh, and have a very uh, pleasant, uh, nice uh, day, uh, and uh, talk to you very soon, uh, hopefully. Thank bye you bye. Sounds so great. Thank you. Yeah.